Coach Dave Biddle from hey, Bucknuts. Can you talk about the the balance you guys have to walk between being aggressive but not wanting to give up big plays? And I'm sure that's a tough balance you guys have to walk. Have to walk. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. You know, you know, being aggressive, you you still have to have. You know, you just don't blitz just to be blitzing. You don't dial a blitz. Uh, you got to have a a reason why uh, to blitz. A lot of people nowadays in the in the game try to negate that with all the five out, all the empty, all those things to try to keep you from pressuring them. Uh, so you have to be smart. You have to have a plan. Um, you know, obviously, if you're blitzing, you want to blitz when you don't expect them to pick it up or max protect so they can hurt your secondary. Um, so that's, you know, that's part of the plan of going in and blitzing. Do you blitz on early downs? Do you blitz on third down? So there's a lot that goes into it. And you guys seem to mix it up, like against Northwestern, you played some soft coverage, but then when mm -hmm. Duran Grant had his interception, kind of game-changing interception, you were playing right. some press coverage there. Right. So how, how often do you guys feel like you mix up your coverage within a game? Well, I mean, you'd like to be able to say you can press guys the whole game. I mean, you'd like to. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, if you were playing 65 snaps a game back like you did in 1995, uh, you're playing almost 80 snaps average a game and those guys start doing this in man coverage a lot. So uh, you'd like to be able to press them every snap. If I had my brothers, we'd walk up and press every snap. But you can't, that, that's not realistic. And uh, some of the coverages don't allow you to do that anyway. But uh, yeah, that was a game changing play because we were in press and they weren't expecting us to be in press and threw the ball out there. You know, so yeah, yeah you'd like to be able to do it a lot. Yeah, Eric, what, what, uh, with that in mind, do you think y'all are a good press coverage team? I mean, when you look at it, I mean, is that where y'all are at your best, you think? I mean, from a Well, uh, here, here's the thing about press coverage. Press coverage, to me, eliminates a lot of different routes that you have to cover. You know, you got to cover the go, you know, uh, and, and probably a hitch or a slant. You know, they don't run comebacks. They don't run a lot of digs. They don't run a lot of stuff because they don't have that in their plan because you're walked up press. Um, we'd like to continue to improve on press and be a good press team. Uh, but again, if you're, you know, pressing in three deep is different than pressing in cover one or blitzing. It's, it's a total different deal. I mean, like the, the play that got Northwestern back in the game the other night after y'all taking the mm -hmm. lead, I mean, Bradley, it looked like he almost dropped into like deep third or something. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what was going on there. Mm -hmm. CJ had ro rolled in and mm -hmm. stuff. And they popped the play. My, I guess mm -hmm. my point is, what did y'all work on this past week to like sort of tighten those kind of things up, or what was what was sort of the emphasis? Well, a lot of it is when we are when we are playing thirds coverage and we are using what we call a clue technique, where the corner has to clue two to one, he's got to stay on top and stay square. So if two goes to the flat, he's on top of one. Okay, if one and two go vertical, he's got to split them, and we got to help him with a little bit of reroute on number two. That particular play, we needed a corner on top. We needed for CJ to intercept the ball because they throw into buzz coverage. And do you think last week, you think your guys have sort of gotten, you know, kind of short things up that they needed to get fixed, fixed or which is what you're feeling going into this week? I I, you know, I, people say fix. You know, our number one objective is to stop the run. You know, and if a team can't run it on you and, and they can throw it on you, you know, if, as long as you're tackling, as long as you're trigger, triggering and tackling, you're going to be okay. We've got to sure up trigger and tackle. That's what we're working on, trigger and tackle. The, the, the coverages are what they are. When you're playing 3D, you know, the outcuts a lot of times are going to be there. Now you've got to tackle them. You know? So that's, that's probably the biggest thing we worked on is trigger and tackle this week. Front row right, Austin. How did you think? Dave Brown played in that expanded role or maybe helping to fill that void for Christian just for one game? Or I mean, I thought he did a, a, a pretty decent job. You know, uh, I like to, you know, a couple plays you like to have back, but for a first ball game and playing, like I said, 70, 80 plus snaps, you know, to have, you know, few plays that you like to have back is not bad. Hopefully he continues to get better. But he's a senior. He's played a lot of snaps. I mean, he, he understands that role at strong safety. Uh, so it gives us the opportunity to play a guy with some experience. I know you guys compete every day. Mm -hmm. Are Tyvis and Vaughn, did last week, did you look and see if you guys could change or tweak the personnel with those guys in there at all? Sure. I mean, we try to, uh, you know, we'd like to see if Tyvis could play free safety. You know, 
I think that's, he's got a chance to be that guy one day. So we, obviously we work there. We think Bond obviously is talented enough to be, the, be a nickel, you know, and play a lot of snaps. So, yeah, we did tweak around with a few things like that last week. Front row, Bill. Hey, Rick, if you could just kind of put on your co-defensive coordinator hat. Yeah. At the start of the season, the perception was that the secondary would be the strength. Mm -hmm. Front seven was very young. Um, it seems like the defensive line in particular has played very well. The secondary struggled. What's mm -hmm. your take on, on the overall defense? Uh, and, you know, I think it goes back to overall philosophy. And, you know, when, when we go into a game plan and we say, first of all, we can't let them run it, so we commit, you know, guys to the run. Um, so in that ball game, you saw a lot of seven guys in the box when they had two backs, eight guys in the box, which puts a lot of pressure on, on the corners, especially those guys, especially those guys. Um, so I think our philosophy is obviously stop the run, you know, and knowing what the issues are on the outside part. Now, do we want to play some more man-to-man? -man? Yes, we want to continue to play more man-to-man. -man. That's going to help those corners, I think, take away some of those short throws because we can go get up on them and cover them a little tighter. So, uh, I mean, I don't think there's anything about weakness. Of, I just think we, we've got to tackle better, we've got to trigger better in, 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 uh, in three deep zone and continue to press more, okay, cover tighter coverage on the outside, don't give up seams down the middle. The ball's not being thrown particularly down the middle of the field. It's really from the hash out. So we just got to tighten, our, tighten ourselves up a little bit. This time last year, when after the Indiana game, mm -hmm. you guys really kind of had to refocus or mm -hmm. whatever the word is. How good do you feel about where the defense is now compared to them? I feel uh, really good. I mean, I feel like we are talented up front, and we have to play less guys in the box because I think we can. I think we're talented enough up front to front four to be good and play some coverage in the back on first and second down. That the key is first and second down. We're a really good third down team. I mean, one of the best in the country, I believe. And first and second down, that's where people are trying to make their money against us throwing the football. And we have to continue to get better on first and second down. Our left front row, Rusty. Hey, Everett, I always like as balanced as you can be within a couple of yards of what they were like to you running and passing. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about what they do and what you have to do to stop them? Well, uh, Greg Davis, who is the offensive coordinator, gave me my first Division I full-time job at Tulane. And I've known Greg for 20-some-odd years, and he hadn't changed a whole lot. He's a, a zone run game. I mean, he fits exactly what I was been in the past. I mean, he's going to get in one back, two back, run the zone, run the zone, and then play pass off of it. And then third down, get, you know, get in three wide receivers, a tight end, and use the tight end to work your Mike linebacker. So that's what he does, and, and it doesn't change, and it hadn't changed. So we've got to obviously stop the run, the zone run game. They've got, you know, backs that are capable, okay, hard runners, tough physical offensive line. Um, so we've got to stop that. And then we've got to be good, obviously, again, on first and second down with the play action pass and the quick game. They throw a lot of quick game passes on first down. Related, you guys won 18 in a row. Is there any, does that mount at all that pressure? as you win to maintain that for both coaches and players? I, I, I really don't believe it does. I think you. I think every game's its own entity, and you just go in and you work on every every single game and not look at what's happened in the past. You work on the next one. And, uh, you know, the hardest thing as a coach is you're always thinking about the next one after you, as soon as you just finish that one. Northwestern, boom, we got a bye week, but we're all, you know, planning on Iowa, you know, how to stop Iowa. So that's kind of the, you know, the mentality, I think, of our football team and our staff. Final question. Tim? Yeah, uh, Eric, just talk about their running game in particular. That Wiseman kid seems to be one of those tough, hard running guys. Yeah. I mean, just talk about him a little bit. What have you seen from him on video that stands out about him? Well, uh, you know, obviously in the zone run game, I mean, they run both inside and outside zone. He does a nice job of knowing where to cut the ball back uh, in the run game or keep it front side, as we say. Uh, you know, the key is, is when you're, when you're a good offensive line and you're running and you're pushing those defensive linemen, that ball can get to that second level in a hurry uh, if somebody doesn't fit a gap properly. And then now you got issues of a big back in the secondary. So those are the things that, that obviously we have to be. We've got to build a wall on the run game, make him stop his feet so we can get the backside pursuit there. Does Tuckney show up when you watch video of him? I mean, does sure, he, yeah. I mean, talk about just him particularly. Is, it, is there like a... 
I don't want to quit kind of – what do you see out of him? I guess uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think that's, you know, what Coach Ferentz and the program has been about. It's been about toughness, you know, and uh, uh, the run game and toughness. He's – Coach Ferentz an old offensive line coach, you know, and, and that's, you know, run the ball. I'm sure they do, you know, inside run a lot, you know, uh, in practice. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it is. I think the running back typifies what the staff is. You know, he's a tough kid and a tough runner. Coach, thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm.